Hi, I'm Dr. Adeline Tang from University of Malaysia, Sabah. In this video clip, I will explain financial management and accounting, Unit 7, in the course Fundamentals of Entrepreneurial Acculturation, APK in University of Malaysia, Sabah. In this unit, there are five subtopics that you need to learn. First, the importance of financial accounting. Next, the type of cost financial statement, financial resources, and the break-even point. For this video group, I will explain the first three topics, the importance of financial accounting, type of cost, and the financial statement. The next video group, I will explain the financial resources and break-even point. Let's look at the learning outcome. First, you need to understand the importance of financial management and accounting. You need to know the types of cost and interpret the financial statement, balance sheet and cash flow in the business. We will start by looking at what are the importance of doing or understand the financial accounting. Financial accounting is the planning of financial resources in a company. In another word, financial accounting actually is to plan the usage of and receive of money in order to achieve the maximum profit. So financial accounting is prepared to analyze the company's financial or position at a certain period of time to ensure that the company have enough financial resources to pay for the activities that the company is going to do to evaluate the success of the company financially by looking at the profit of the company. Next, to generate corporate finance from the financial accounting. And last, but the most important, is to assist the top management to make decisions in the company whether they should do certain promotion or not. If they know that they have enough financial support, maybe they can do more promotion than a, not, a small company that do not have financial support. Next, we will look at the type of cost. When we look at the type of cost, remember that every company have to survive. They have to survive in the long run. We call it sustainability. And company have to survive only with profit. If a company is not earning profit, the company, the business is not able to survive. And then with profit also allow a business to grow. So all these are re related to the profit or the financial of a company. Let's look at when a company is started, the company needed capital. Capital is the amount of money that the owner of the company will pay to start doing business. When we have this capital, then we have to spend money on capital expenditure or we have to spend money to buy machine equipment that to start a business. And at the same time, we have to have money to pay for the working capital. That means the expenses that you have to pay for the short term and the long term. When we talk about the cost, <clears throat> Uh, there are two major types of costs. The first is the cost of goods sold. That is the direct cost in production of goods and services such as raw material costs and delivery costs. We also have this operating cost. That is the operational cost, logistic cost, and promotion cost. When we look at this cost, actually all these costs can divide into two major types. The first is the fixed cost. Cost that is a fixed for a certain period of time, for example, salaries, insurance, equipment, rental, and so on. At the same time, there are variable costs, costs that will increase according to the quantity of production. The higher the quantity of production, the higher the variable costs, such as the utility costs, the labor expenses, and the raw material costs. When both fixed cost and variable cost added together, it will become the total cost of the company. There is an important rule of thumb here. The fixed cost must be less than the 30% of the total cost. So, 
When we look at this graph here, this diagram here, you can see that the fixed cost is always fixed for different quantity of cells. All right, but the variable cost will increase by the quantity of cells. It means that the more you sell, the higher the variable cost. So to achieve this rule of thumb, we have to ensure that the sales volume is high so that the variable cost is higher than the fixed cost. Next, we will look at the financial statement of a company. We prepare three financial statements actually for a company. First is the income statement. Income statement is prepared to predict the likely profit or loss of a business. While the balance sheet is prepared to forecast, that means to predict the asset and sales, uh, assets and liabilities of a company. And the projected cash flow statement is to project the cash available in the company. In a new business, they do not have a sales record. So they have to prepare pro forma financial statement. Pro forma financial statement actually is a budget or a projected financial statement based on the certain assumptions and projection. For example, based on projection that this company is going to sell, this company is going to sell, let's say 200 unit in the first month and then 250 unit in the second month. So based on this assumption, the company is able to project what is the profit and loss of the company in the first year. So we call it pro forma. It's a projected or a budget financial statement for a new company. When we look at pro forma income statement, Performa income statement start with showing the sales of a year minus by the cost of sales. That means cost of preparing the product for sale, for example, raw materials, wages. And after that, we will get the gross profit, right? Sales minus the cost of good sales. We will get the gross profit and the gross profits minus by the other expenses such as salaries, rental, commissions, you will get the net profit. So this is the profit that projected for the company for a certain period of time, for example, for one year. After that, there is one balance sheet. Balance sheet is prepared to show the assets and liabilities of a company. Assets, uh, there are two types of assets. First is fixed assets, the equipments, buildings and Vehicles, these are fixed assets, and the current assets are such as cash, saving in the bank, and inventory of the cat of the company. So when we total up both types of assets, we'll get a total assets. And at the same time, we will have current liabilities or the short-term debts, short-term loan of a company, and long-term liabilities and equity. Long-term liabilities are the long-term debts, bank loan or other type of debts that more than one year. And also we put down, we record our capital and net profit here. So when we total up the liabilities and equity, it should be equal to the total asset. Next, we will look at the cash flow statement. Cash flow statement is to show the cash received and payment every month. So we will show the cash balance from last month. After that, plus the cash received for that month. Cash received normally refer to the sales that we received minus the cash payment that are the activities that we pay, the cost that we pay, the expenses that we pay. Then we will get a cash balance for the month. Based on this, we will predict. We will able to predict whether the company have enough money to pay for the month, uh, the expenses every month. And this will help the company, especially small company, to be very careful with the expenses to avoid a loss of uh, money. Okay, I will stop here for this video clip. Thank you for watching. 
And for more information, please refer to Smart Tree UMS or my Schoology account with the access code here. Please also remember to create your profile at the Go e-commerce website and go to watch the videos in the Go e-commerce website. Thank you for watching.